Deacon Franklin, that all of it plays in that I can, I can see that us as mankind, the human race, the only place that I can see that we feel as though we don't need to spend time in the group. We don't need to spend time in church. We don't need to spend time in Sunday school. We don't need to spend time in Bible study. We don't need all of that. The only place that we feel like we can do that, we please. And yet please God with what we think is right. Is in God's house, his way, his church, everything else in this world that we do, we make sure we find out the rules. We find out the boundaries. We find out what we can and cannot do. But with God, we have our mind made up that God going to accept me with what I feel like I should do. But what we need to be doing is searching out the scripture to find out what it is and how it is that God wants us to live our life here on this earth. What it is that truly pleases him and what it is that he accepts into his kingdom. If not, we're not going to be accepted because I feel
He began this verse with one letter word. O. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Sometimes when we're going through things, we want to look at God and not good. I don't feel well today. God is still good. I pray today. God is still good. No matter what we're going through, God is still good. And it said, for his mercy endure forever. What mercy? The mercy that God gives unto us that we don't deserve. God hold back what we deserve. Give unto us what we don't deserve. And this is his mercy. And the thing about God's mercy is, is that God's mercy is renewed every day. When we wake up in the morning, God's mercy is renewed. And it, his mercy endures forever. Now, now we well, need to get this. Because, see, God's nature do not depend on how good we are. See, the nature of God is love. They don't depend. Oh, well, I've been good today. God don't love me. Now, even when we are disobedient, God know. And the reason I know that is because the Bible says in the book of Romans that God died for us while we were still in our sin. He loved us so much that he gave himself for us while we were still sinning. Go ahead, bro. I was just thinking about, um, when um Jesus Jesus when um they came to Jesus and said uh, oh good 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 when they called Jesus good and he said ain't none good but the Lord but then here he, but but then here he said uh, he said give thanks to the Lord for he is good so at the time that he was here he didn't feel himself as good until he fulfilled his you see in that. Uh, incident that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Jesus was showing the Pharisees that what they were saying about him could only be said about God. And they are actually saying that by him being good, they're acknowledging that he was God. Right. So that, that's what he was telling them. Now you say I'm good, he said no, I'm good. None of us. But he wasn't speaking of himself personally because we got to keep in mind now that he is the one that redeemed us why? because of his goodness, his goodness, his perfection, his perfect pleasing of God. The reason that Jesus never sinned is to let us know that sin opposes God. So you see, God the Son couldn't sin because in order for him to do that, he would oppose the Father. So they were actually saying to him, if you call him a good man, you must know who I am. That's why he said, the one good, said the father. So now, did you good on that? Yes, sir. Verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, how many of them look at society today? The redeemed of the Lord should say so. We should stand up for the Lord. But instead, instead of us standing up for what's right, we compromise and try to keep our mouth closed because we, I don't want to start that. <laughs> well, you know, God, but God is not all the confused. That is correct. He don't want you to be confused about his word. He don't want you to be confused about his will. He don't want you to be confused about his way. So it's not the confusion to stand up for what right because the devil being taken, Jesus Christ would have never been on the cross. Peter would have never been put on the cross upside down. James would have never been beheaded. John would have never been sent to the island of Pat. And the other disciples sent in other directions. But they all suffered for the name of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Mm. What enemy? The enemy saved him. Sin. 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 The enemy death. Now y'all need to also get this. Just as he has taken care of those enemies, there is no other enemy that can come on this earth that God cannot protect us from, that God It can be an enemy of a plane. It can be an enemy of a fire. 
are in total obedience. And that's why the problem is. You see, too many times instead of us walking in obedience, we walk in our feet. I want to do what I want to do. We walk in our thing. Those are the things. That's why you think your feeling is connected to emotion. And those things can change when a person just saying something you don't like. We're not the walk on feelings and emotion. I feel what I think. We walk on what God said. And if we're going to be obedient to God, we believe what he said. We walk in what he said. And you know what? We can walk in our thoughts. Not in the authority of yourself, not in the puffing up of yourself, but we walk in the authority of the one that is inside of us and the one that has spoken these things. And we can walk in authority of God because He is inside of us and God is all we need. It ain't easy. But God never said it be easy. What He did promise us was that I never leave. I never forsake. For he will redeem from the hand of the enemy. Whatever comes against you in your life, as a believer, is your enemy. God told the believer of the Old Testament and the New. He said, I will go before you. I will defeat your enemy. Our problem is a lot of times we're not letting God go before us. We're too busy trying to do it ourselves. And then we get caught up in, I just can't do it. My heart is just too hard. It is. Why do you think God gave you his spirit? Don't you know God already know? This flesh is weak. This flesh has already shown when God gave the commandment to show us we could not do this.
When I spend some time with the Lord, praise Him, make my own day in heaven. Why? Because I make me a good meal this morning. My soul has been nourished. My spirit has been feeding. I even have a worry that sometimes when you start spending time with the Lord in the morning, you'll go through your scripture. You might be studying the scripture. And then when you go into the day, exactly what you've been studying and what you have to go through. And you start to pray, you know, because you say, Lord, you just told me that this morning. You just showed me that this morning. Nothing make my trial so much easier for me to go through. Why? Because you have warned me and gave me this. No, I have to do the fight out. When we spend time with him for it. For it. When we are so tired, I'm just bored out. Why am I tired? Because I tell you, I've been in that worry. I have gotten into sleep time with God. Guess what? God bless you, my God. You are being tired because of time with him. Most of the time we're tired and bored out, not because of time with him, it's because of time that we're in the world. Whether it's from the job, you know, whatever that it might be, I'm just so moved out. But why? Because of the time that I'm spending with the world instead of the time that I'm spending with him. The internet. Now, we can't do nothing about yesterday, but if your eyes will come on today, don't close them this evening. I must say, Lord. Amen. It says that gather them out on the land from the east, from the west. From the north or from the south. He's talking about the children of Israel being brought together. How God has brought them together. Remember the children of Israel every time they went in the bondage. Why did they go in the bondage? They went in the bondage because they were disobedient. So what God would do is take their enemy and use their enemy to whoop them back into place. It wasn't that that enemy could conquer them. It was that enemy was used by God to put them back in place. Do I need to say that again? Say it again. The enemy be used to whip the believer back in place. It's not that the enemy have victory over you. It's that God has so much love for you that he wants you back where you need to be. So he takes the enemy to whip you back to where you need to be. Once you learn your lesson, because when we start to get whipped, Back to where we need to be. What do we do then? We call on the Lord. Oh. Oh, as a matter of fact, it is a question coming on those verses. Yeah. Ain't no question. I was going to say, you know, if I didn't know the Lord, it's so easy for me to go back to what I need today. Amen. It's just this call. He said, I go around this way. Straight for the evening. He come up on him, and I'll rather say he do what he do. He go back to his curve. Mm -hmm. He let me know. Right now, this man, if it's more comfortable than now, you come a little closer. I'm going to stretch. It, it, it is a good demonstration. If I don't know nothing about the Lord, if I don't put no time with him, well, of course, I'm going to fall right back to what I need to do. Amen. If we're not putting in, we're going to be taken out. I don't care how a person grow in the Lord when you stop. Because this is a continuous thing until we leave here. No person on this way, I don't care how advanced, how mature they are in the Word of God, how much they know they don't know it all. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be strong in certain areas. This is why we need to come together. Because when you take those that are strong in certain areas and you put all of them together, and then they start to strengthen each other. Oh, so he got to hit him in that. And he got one he cannot defeat. He cannot make quit. He cannot give a mind to say, I give up. Because they're too strong and to the end, the Word of God and the Spirit of God has filled them to take them through what they cannot do and say. To give them comfort when they're in the midst of storm, they cannot give to them and say. It's the Spirit of God within us that comforts us through the thing we cannot go through our sin. Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. And the last thing we want to do is the one that's inside of us to stop feeding 
hands. But in that point, we're talking about those verses. If not, what's the next set of our lives? Fold through. Mm -hmm. Fold through now. They they wander they wander in the wilderness in the they wander in the wilderness wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distress, and He led them forth by the right way that they might go to the city of, habili of habilitation, of habitation, or that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he, sanct for he sanctified, for he satisfied the longing soul and fulfill their hungry soul with goodness. So now he's talking about how he wanted to do it. Remember the first thing that they did three days. Three days after God had delivered them through the wilderness through the sea. God has parted the Red Sea. He allowed them to walk across on dry land. He defeated that enemy. All the Egyptian soldiers were defeated. They lost their life. Three days later, they were in the wilderness and they were without war. Three days, they forgot about what God did three days ago. <clears throat> Guess what they started doing? Murmuring and complaining. They were hungry and they were thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. The reason their soul fainted in them is just like we are instead of us when we're going through things, to start praising God and thanking God for what he did yesterday, knowing that what he did yesterday, he still has the power to do today. So we're looking to him today for him to take care of us because he took care of us of yesterday. And if we know that he's going to take care of us today from yesterday, we can also look to the future and say, the same God, he the same yesterday, he the day, he the same forevermore. Just like he took care of me yesterday, he take care of me today. And guess what? I can even speak on tomorrow. Why? Because God don't change. <coughs> Who changed? We do. God never changed. We change. Our attitude change. Our mind change. Our heart set to change. You know, I come to find out all sometimes we need is a little outside influence from somebody who might have a better education. Go and lead you away from the Lord because it sounds good. Go on. This is why we got to be grounded and rooted in the truth, not in what sounds good. See, what sounds good go back to them feeling. Come on, now. I, I feel like that. That sounds like right. That sounds all right. I, I tell you, that do, that do make sense. That's what he said. What God word is is true. It's not about making sense. Come on, now. God is the one who made sense. Whatever sense we have, who do you think gave them to you? And he ever given you anything that's gonna be above him. Come on now. Oh man, I got a mind back in better use your phone sit. I got one session. God, I, I think I can get the God this way. I would think it take all of that. And then they'll lead somebody that's a fact that's saying nothing. How much the Lord. It said they put it in the book. Hunger and thirst. The soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. You know, when we get down into trouble, now this is what we do. We try everything we can. We use every avenue we can think. We go to every friend we know that might be can help. Mm. After we have done all that we can, we find out ain't nothing that we do away. We find out ain't nothing people that we we're depending on can help. Guess what we said? Well, we done tried everything else. We might as well have tried it all. Mm -hmm. Think about 
what you just said. We are believers. We don't try other things. We go directly to the source. Why am I going to go all around trying to think my way out of stuff when I am a believer and I have a God that says he's going to direct my path? Why can't I just go to him and look to him for the answer? He said that in word would be the life of our path. How do I seek him? I seek him through the word. I seek him through prayer. I seek him through obedience. I seek him through sacrifice. And it takes sacrifice. The Father God, he said he led them from forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. So now when we look at that word right, it said he led them forth by the right way. The right way is the straight way. Two. How many times does the want to go the straight way? We want to go around this way. Wandering around. Look here, let, let, let me show you something. Even with us as pastors and preachers, God gave his word. He the one man. Then he chose people, me, that he chose, to take his word to the world and give understanding. Now, if we are not taking the word of God to the people of God, Undoubtedly, just like God gave, we have compromised the truth to do what? Please people. But this is the thing. When we please people, we weaken people. How can we be strong in the Lord? Strong in his might. And we don't even know what the Lord says in his word. The Bible said, in the last day there will be a great falling away. Falling away from what? Falling away from the faith. This is what we have today. The believers themselves have fallen from faith. Our faith now is mingled. And it is mingled with the world. How many souls are really longing 
Not many. Well, all of them. Now just think about it. Not many. Not many. many. We long to do things my way. We, we long to be religious. Religious means that I go through certain rituals that make me feel good. I go through certain rituals to make me feel like I should be accepted by God. I go through certain rituals to feel like I'm accepted by God. So guess what? The rituals that I'm going through make me very religious, but that don't make me saved. Longing soul, we be sanctified the longing soul. We should be longing for his word, his will, and his way. And when we are longing for, we are hungry for, we are hungry so now I want us to get this. Take both of the words. Hunger, hunger, and longing. Now let's take both of them and let, let's flip them over and use them for food. Hmm? Now have you ever been hungry? Oh, damn. Now when you are hungry, that means that your appetite is longing for something to eat, isn't it? Yep. Now, what do you, y'all didn't get it, what do you do when your appetite is longing for something to eat? You gotta get something to eat. You go for Matter of fact, let me ask you this, y'all. The hungrier you, you get, the more you start to look for something to eat.
Oh, you, when you say common sense, the first thing you say is common on it. Right. Uh, all of them got. Yeah. Ain't no fun. We look up to them. Like a tater. Man, I mean, all of them here, they know what we're talking about. Wait, you know, when we start to think like that, just say for common sense. God gave all of us common sense. Every one of them. Then what makes your common sense more important than mine? Come on now. No one fight come in. No, we start a fight. <laughs> See, now this is what started arguments in the faith because you're going to make your common sense yeah. be more of my common sense. I got common sense too. You know, but we're not, this is what we got to get away from. This is why the Bible tells us in, 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 in our Romans 12 and 2 not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It got to be renewed. Why? Because it's still common. Common sense ain't gonna get us together. But in the end of the way, we're going to go to the last outline. If not, let's look at verse 39 through 43. Mm -hmm. Again, they are men and wrong, low, good, oppressed, patient, and sorrow. So, before. Decrease in number. 
You see, when the, the rebellion decreased in them, the believer will increase. Mm -hmm. Oh, God will bring them back. Just if he brought the end of the life, he's going to drive them back to it. It might be through suffering, through trial, through whatever. But whatever it takes, you get us back where we need to be with him, he'll do that. And keep in mind, I'm going to say it again, God is a God, you ain't got to worry about what you have or don't have. God can take it from nothing. He's the one that gives you position to raise you up. He is all power. You see, too many times, we're trying to see. We got to turn to what we see in order for us to receive what we don't see.
start living in our surroundings. We start living in our love. Believe me, we are a shadow of doubt. And if he see it, he'll do it. Believe in God will be everything here. And then to see him with or without. I'm just saying how I would use, how I would say it. Like, I mean, like, like how we just talking about how Sarah said, let's help God out. And then, like, then think like, like, what most of, you know, and then, like, what he even in the beginning said, you know. I'm just thinking about how, how, how it's used. Like, you know, it's a, you know, in the, in the writing shall see it. And rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Who's who wild? Like you know, I'm just, I'm just like on um, that how you how I see it, like iniquity, and then her mouth. Mm -hmm. In other words, in their shame and humiliation, they have had nothing to say. I'm Even saying, in their own defense, not in praise of God. Even when people speak against you. God raised you up. Man can't do anything about it. Guess what? Everything. 
anything that they can lie about, anything that they can say about you, God will let it be seen that it's not you. And he'll stop that lie. You see, we, we live in a society, we say all the time, actions be loud and rude. People take you down with rude. This is why it's important for us. Don't get caught up in what people are saying about you. Don't get caught up in what people are trying to do. Well, we got to stay focused on this Lord. When we continue to stay focused on Him, no matter what they're saying, no matter what it's saying, you just keep walking. And you'll come to find out your right is wrong. Will silence all of the things don't lie that will come against you, all the things that will come against you. Your walk will prove what the truth is and silence their lips. Let me say hurt. It said her mouth. Well, it just that's, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like. And not talk about a woman period. No, no, but I mean, like. It, it, remember who Israel is. Israel doesn't believe. These are the children of God. Israel is going to be known as her. Right. Uh -huh. That's what I was saying, like. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that is. But the silence, and, and this is the thing. Sometimes when people are telling you down on the other side, and it looks like your enemy coming is coming against you on every side. Even your friend that became your enemy. Your family that walked away and became your enemy. We start to look at who is against us, and a lot of times because they are against us, we say, I'm out of way to quit. I, I, I'm out of way to stop. No, no, no. What God wants us to do is don't even acknowledge what they're talking about. Don't even get involved in it. What you do is you keep seeking me and you let your walk speak for you. You ain't got to argue about it. I ain't getting on the why people lie 